Okay, so if we take a look at some of the differences between boys and girls, the first thing that we typically notice is a difference in what's called peak height velocity. So earlier we took a look at this velocity curve, which is the rate of growth per year. And if you take a look here, you see that girls typically start growing around the age of 11 years old. This is when the growth spurt begins on average for girls. And the average, the highest rate of growth, which is called the peak height velocity, the highest velocity of growth, in this case is around 8 centimeters a year, roughly 3 inches per year at around age 12. And then it drops off as the girl grows and uh, approaches adulthood. You see for boys, it occurs later, but it tends to be higher. So this is around 10 centimeters a year, or about 4 inches a year. Um, around the age of 14. So that's when boys on average are growing the most rapidly. So boys tend to grow later, but they tend to grow faster when they're in the midst of their adolescent growth spurt. So we say that they have a higher peak height velocity. The second major difference is that when um, boys and girls reach adulthood or as they end the adolescent growth spurt, you see a lot bigger differences between the strength and the flexibility between boys and girls. So one of the things that causes uh, boys to grow rapidly and also to see a lot more growth in the torso than women is the, uh, the male sex hormone testosterone, which accounts for increases in uh, muscularity, which leads to increases in strength and actually decreases in flexibility. So whereas the strength and flexibility differences of uh, boys and girls during childhood aren't all that different, once they have gone through the adolescent growth spurt, you see a lot more difference. Um, you also s find that women tend to have a little bit more strength and power in the legs and the hips, whereas men tend to have more strength and power in the upper body uh, relative to women. And again, most of that is caused to the increased muscularity that comes from testosterone in boys. So let's talk about a few implications for coaches. Uh, we're going to start off with the idea of typecasting. So if you're coaching, um, let's say you're coaching a middle school basketball team, what might be a typical occurrence is that you'll have a one boy who has already started to go through the adolescent growth spurt. So he is much taller than his peers. And if you're coaching this basketball team, your inclination might be to put this boy at center because he is the tallest player out there. However, this boy is an early mature. So the odds are that he will probably stop growing earlier than most of his peers. And he's probably gonna have a shorter height. So while he might be, he might be taller now at this age, uh, he's not always going to be taller than his peers. One of the problems can be is if he only learns the skill set for playing center. Once he stops growing and all of his peers catch up, he's going to have skill sets for a position that he doesn't have the height to play when he's in, say, 10th grade and he's around 15 or 16 years old. So typecasting can be a big problem, especially if you're playing more specialized versions of youth sports where there's a pressure to win and to have the best player uh, at each position at a very early age. So again, just to take a look at that question, what are some of the disadvantages that an early maturing boy might experience in the sport of basketball? Another problem is that late maturing athletes are typically the first ones to be cut. Um, and this is because they typically don't have the size uh, the height or the muscularity of early maturing or middle maturing athletes. But oftentimes late maturing athletes, uh, as they get much older, have they end up being taller and stronger than some of their peers. However, if they've been cut from sports, um, oftentimes they don't have the skill set to get involved. So that can be another mistake, of, especially of age group and, and middle school sport coaches. There's another phenomenon called adolescent awkwardness, and this typically occurs in the year of the most rapid adolescent growth, and typically because um, the dimensions of the body are changing at such a rapid pace, oftentimes the muscles are 
uh, not growing as fast to keep up with the, the lengthening of the bone. So sometimes the muscles are tight and that causes sort of a lack of flexibility. Um, so typically there's a lot of awkward movement during the, uh, the fastest periods of growth. And that oftentimes is something you'll need to account for if you are teaching skills to athletes of this age. It's gonna take them a lot longer to learn some of these skills. Another area that um, there are certainly some implications for coaches is how we equalize teams or sort athletes into different levels of ability. Um, oftentimes this is done based on chronological age, but especially during adolescence, you can have a couple of 13 boys, 13 uh, year old boys who are completely different in their size. I mean, you can have a differences of maybe even up to a foot and a half in some cases, that would be pretty extreme, but it can happen. Um, so at this age, uh, oftentimes equalizing and sorting athletes, uh, especially if you have a lot of athletes to, to choose from, can be a consideration. Um, sometimes it's certainly more common in the sport of football, but um, there may be opportunities where you could sort athletes into um, different teams based on the, their height uh, or based on their weight. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily limit that to football, although it is typical in youth football to have sort of weight teams and um, overweight teams. And then finally, one of the considerations would be for co-ed sports. So as we mentioned, during childhood, there isn't much um, difference on average between boys and girls in terms of strength and flexibility. But after the adolescent growth spurt, there definitely is, uh, there are, are marked differences. Um, on average between boys and girls. So this would suggest that we can definitely have co-ed sports um, throughout childhood, but after the adolescent growth spurt, there could be a danger of um, having boys and girls play co-ed sports, especially if there's more contact. And that wraps up the physical growth and maturation part.